Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tech Raptor Podcast. I'm Robert Scarpanito, your features editor. Ian Rotten, editor in chief. Rutledge Doggett, site founder. Andrew Stretch, word editor. Indeed, that's what we all do sometimes. Uh, welcome to the new year. It's uh, it's 2022. You know, it's ready for some new games, cool stuff to see, and uh, I hope February is going to be a pretty banging month. January is a little slow, but you know. It is what it is. Uh, We're going to talk about some of the games we've been playing later on in this episode. But first, let's get into some news. PlayStation VR 2 was just announced at CES. Uh, (laughs) We got a little cat in the background there. Um, We don't have any release window or anything like that yet. All we know is that it is happening. Uh, All the specs are out there if you're curious. But essentially, the first launch title they've revealed is that Horizon... Horizon, something of the wild, call of the forest, call of the mountain, call, call of the, the mountain. mountain. Yeah, call you the mountain. dummy. Gosh, I can't remember that. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. How's everybody here feeling about the VR two? I mean, it seems pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, for people that want it on PlayStation, it seems like a, a great new addition. Um, it, I mean, oh yeah, it's this is if if VR is going to become a more mainstream thing, this is exactly how it's going to do happen. It's going to be a console first. Yeah, PC is just too complicated to deal like with. A whole but, paycheck too. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. But like, if this is exactly where it's going to start, and I mean, PSVR had cool stuff, um, and the specs on this make it even better. Because if anybody that's done VR, like, there's definitely a resolution problem where it, it's not great and it makes it really takes you out of it mm-hmm. to where sometimes you can even like see the lines on the screen and like stuff like that but uh this looks really cool and yeah. i think yeah. i think playstation's leading the way when it comes to vr at least on console um they seem to at least you know 2018 at e3 they had a giant booth dedicated to like six or seven different vr games all running at once yeah. which was really cool to see um not to mention i think facebook had vr at the time sorry meta um and there were a bunch of vr booths so we've seen gradual adoption and and the hope is i guess with playstation vr 2 is is maybe we'll see more widespread adoption more development and and more cool stories no i think that immersiveness i think that nintendo has really been going leaps and bounds with their approach to vr (laughs) where you have to hold the cardboard up to your face yeah like i mean who doesn't want to experience the world of breath of the wild um with an entire nintendo switch strapped to your forehead not even strapped (laughs) that's true not even strapped (laughs) this isn't even a strap yeah no i agree i think this is going to be like the next big step probably in ushering in or making vr a little more mainstream right i think the quest 2 was a huge leap in that direction because quest 2 is like the most like not even plug and play it's just play right like you just put it on and there you are um from my understanding this is still going to be wired right you have to plug it into the playstation in some way but I, it's going to beat what psvr currently is because like currently what you need to plug it into that box and then plug that box into the ps4 or five if you do the five yeah because it needs like extra extra power mm-hmm. um and i believe that box also has an extra like graphical processor as well so it just like the ps4 just needed that bit more of a of a boost to get it vr ready one thing that has come out of this that I think is kind of weird is the the lack of backwards compatibility support. It's a good um, point. That, you know, I believe at the moment, if you do have that, if is the current PSVR compatible with PS5 or do you need to like break out the PS4 at that point? I th- you know, I'm not can, sure. I think you can on PS5, I right? You, you just can. need the, the camera. Yeah. Because it needs that, like, because you know, it it, needs, yeah, it needs specifically the PS4 camera as well. Because the PS5 camera doesn't work with the PlayStation VR. Mm -hmm. Um, So it seems like again, you know, Sony. You know, I'm I'm one that you know always enjoys being able to go back and play older games. Um, Not saying that it's necessary, but it just it's another one of those weird Sony decisions. Um, Then I'm going to guess that there was just some technical limitation having to move away from those playstation move controllers but i thought play had no limits no play 
definitely has limits. You see the the asterisk next to play has no limits. Oh, I thought that was a TM. No, well, you'll, you'll find a full list of our limitations. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> the play itself has no limits. It's how you get to the playing that has limitations. Right, but once you start you the play, to... yeah, then no limits. You know, all falls to the wall. Do you want. Right. Yeah. And then there's the big the big half-life shaped question in the room of will this be the first time that anything other than a no. PC VR gets half-life Alex? That'd be amazing, but no. You're thinking no we I mean we've already seen like people rumoring and leakers coming out and saying that yes, it's in the works, yes, there's plans. Um hear, you know. hear me out. What if instead of that, Valve releases Valve Labo? for the steam deck and oh. then you can play the steam deck half-life alex and just hold it up to your face with with a cardboard vr uh mount that's the future Ooh. i want to live in the steam deck looks like it's going to be a lot heavier than a switch so yeah <laughs> yeah you're gonna need two like gradually tilting yeah. downward it's gonna need a strap that goes like from the front to the back of your head yeah but then you can then you can yeah. buy the steam weight and the steam weight is literally yeah, just counter a hunk of lead that you strap to the back of your head ah uh, it's balanced so it keeps you it keeps you upright uh, that's be peak careful gaming. on uh turning left or right you might break your neck <laughs> don't tilt <laughs> but well, that's why they then they How'd released you get the whiplash. Well, I was playing VR. And <laughs> <laughs> that's where they released the steam neck neck brace, right? Yeah. To keep everything steady. Genius. Just gonna slowly become like a, a steam branded Iron Man suit. It, basically, yeah, we're <laughs> on our way. We built this out of scraps in a cave. But PSVR two, I think it's gonna be cool. Um, I do think we're probably not gonna hear about it. Like it's we're gonna not gonna be see it before the end of this year. You know what I mean? Like, Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, My Probably not. I'm guessing like 2023 at least. But uh, what's also cool about it is something like Horizon getting a game for it. It's a known IP. Because I think that part of the problem with VR is that there's been so many like just new IPs of what. Nobody's like, okay, I don't care. What is this? Like there's not a lot of big name stuff in it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what Echo Arena was big. Um, they've had Moss and Moss is getting a sequel. Yep. It was the um, like, Firewall. It was like a first person tactical shooter. Like fire team yeah. alpha or something like that. I can't remember what. It's, I know it started with fire, but now I'm blanking. Yeah. So yeah. it's just neat but, to get a, a bigger yeah. IP like Horizon into it. So maybe if we see others, because I mean, I, I think that it's inevitable that VR is going to become a pretty. I, I think it's always going to be kind of niche, but I think it's it's definitely getting much more popular, mm -hmm. and a lot of companies are committed to it. So. I mean, it'll be interesting to see games like Borderlands VR get ported, man. and I'm sure that you know. I'm sure that in PlayStation fashion, all of the big PSVR titles will get ported and will cost ten dollars more yep. to get the newest, latest, and greatest version. Right. As horrible as that is. Skyrim to say. VR. Let's go. Yeah, I mean just another I'll version. I'll have to update my quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna see to like a more I don't think Horizon's gonna be the last, you know, big uh playstation no. exclusive to get a vr component right like i'm not gonna say like we're gonna see god of war vr or anything like that but <laughs> you know we're gonna we're gonna see more vr come out of like the main first party you know studios. i would love to see sony Fashion. return to concrete genie in vr mm. that was a very fun stylized vibrant game that you could probably mm. do a lot of really neat stuff with the the different graffiti powers if you were in VR. Right. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. Uh, we'll just have to see as we learn more, probably next year. Yeah. Who knows? Years to come. Yep. Uh, on the Microsoft side of things, uh, they're shutting down the Xbox 360 servers for all the Halo games that are on 360. Pour one out for a real one. Mm -hmm. You can't play as, you can't Master Chief on 360 anymore. Well, you can, just not online. Mm. I mean, to be fair, if your 360 hasn't already red ringed by now, um, that's a miracle. Yeah, it's yeah. a miracle. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's it's crazy to think that it is. But when did the 360 first come out? Like 20. Wasn't it 06? 05 yeah, or 06 or 07? Something like yeah. that. Yeah. It's like, you know, 
15 years later and they still like I had no clue that you could just still load up a 360 mm -hmm. um I mean I people, people still... were still playing like it would, the the community was limited but people were still playing mm -hmm. I mean part of this too Ray is like you would think a lot of people would have shifted over to the Xbox One or series at this point because of the Master Chief or I guess even like Steam right like you can kind of play all of these older Halo games on more modern consoles now if you really want to. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, yeah, like if you really want to play a 360 Halo game, you don't need to get your 360 out. You can just plug your disc right into a Series X. Yeah, play has no limits. Boot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got him. <laughs> wow. I wonder what this means for like um, different countries. Because I know there's certain countries where, you know, the older tech is the, still the main thing, the big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't even know if they're still running running servers there at all. I'm thinking, you know, places like Brazil where it's so hard to get new things, where they they run a lot of older consoles a lot in their communities. That's I fair. mean, it was it was only so not that long ago that they stopped making producing PlayStation twos because they were still getting bought in the purchased in these you know lesser wealthy countries where people were playing were playing it and like. The late what even was the Japan last, was still buying them. The last FIFA that came out was like 2018 or something for PS2. It was like something really, relatively recent. So I wonder what that means for them. I don't know. I don't even know if they're running servers on for Halo for you know for outside in those places. No idea. I know they weren't mentioned at all. I just know that's a big limitation for them. I mean, I can also probably imagine that you know even if they had those servers still running with how little the player base is. I yeah. wonder how much those are actually um, costing to run. I guess you would still need them in like certain places around the globe for like mm -hmm. latency. Oh, uh, just um, something I was thinking about, because I know that like that's a big thing in, in certain parts of the world where like 360s are still very prevalent. Mm -hmm. PS2s are still very prevalent, like lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. To me, it's like I, I do feel bad, right, when you think about those people who maybe the, the 360s are the only way to play the game, right? But then you also have to think from a business side of things, like there's a cost to benefit that they're probably weighing. Oh, totally. Like, it's not free to keep these servers up, right? So it's like at some point they have to make that decision, and it's just a shame that some people are going to get lost because of it. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, it's... If your player base is at a certain size, it's just not worth it anymore, you know. From a cost perspective and from a, hey, move on to the next game perspective, I would assume is another kind of... I mean, it's an uh, inevitability for modern gaming. It's... Mm -hmm. uh, every, everything is going to hit this at some point. Yep. Yeah. Well, and you're seeing a lot, too. So, like, OG Battlefield 2 or Battlefront 2, Star Wars... Um, you've got people standing up their own servers to, to still be able to yeah. play online. Um, and that ties into GOG. And there's a couple others that are on GOG that have had um, support added over the last year or so. Um, so, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Halo 2 servers down the line, uh, kind of similar to how you used to connect on Halo 1, where you'd have to kind of connect your PC, and then you would use a program that would link you up with other players around the world. I know for I know for Legacy Halo One, they've already got it that you know if you're on the same LAN as you know a different PC, that you can run a program on your PC that will spoof a LAN party. Mm -hmm. um, so to your Xbox, it'll just be like, oh, this is another original Xbox sitting on the same network as me. Um, I'm going to connect to that, but then just through the power and wizardry of um, of people with fantastic skills and the ability to create these kinds of things um you know you're playing with people all over the world but it's you know the original halo from way back in the day mm -hmm. i mean halo 2 was the big one right you know halo 1 was not really available to be played online unless you had a pc and and went through all the steps to do it but halo 2 was probably very early on in xbox 360's life cycle the big online game um, Games for Windows first. Live. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> that good old uh, thing. That I mean, it's still rearing its head in 2021. So it's 2022 now, right? Oh fuck. 
<laughs> Look, I got my booster shot yesterday. Struggling. Um, <laughs> 2022. It's still Do a you thing. Get a booster shot every day. No, I got one. Uh, oh, I'll just. Shades okay. Friday. It's, nothing yeah. seems different. T- today's. <laughs> today. We're wow. recording this on Saturday, Rod. Are you okay? Yeah, I got my booster shot yesterday. I'm so confused at what I'm saying, other than okay. maybe he's just <laughs> saying I'm an idiot all the time. Mm. Um, Hey, you got to there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Just hell. prove my point. <laughs> uh, speaking of idiots, should we move on to our final story here? Yes. Uh, yes. Battle, Alex's battle. announcement, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Battlefield 2042. Um, earlier this past week, uh, the rush mode was removed, which made people mad which is a shame because that's the first time people have been mad at battlefield 2042 since its launch <laughs> yeah they've uh, been on a great run not, so far it's had a very smooth no problems nobody's successful angry. yeah net code works great best mm-hmm. battlefield yet truly truly is the best uh and then i think this was on january 7th the global comms director at EA, Andy McNamara, tweeted out, and this is now, and these are now deleted tweets, but he tweeted out something along the lines of how uh, the Battlefield team just got back from holiday break, and now they're they're working working more on Battlefield 2042, and uh, pe- people were mad. People made ang- angry tweets because the game is kind of broken still and could use some work, but at the same time, it's like it was a holiday break is it really fair to attack people for you know taking some time off at the end of slash beginning of the year who's to say how dare you rest no it's pretty how shitty you? Yeah. it's pretty shitty it's yeah. it's unreal um i mean even the halo devs have taken a, a, a ton of flack for taking time off at the end of the year like i they I don't work have for anything me. nice to say to people that shit on devs for taking time off um, you know, obviously we're, we're a, a safe in our world partner. Mental health is huge and forcing people to just run themselves into the ground is not good for the game. It's not good for the industry. And it's just, it's, it's not being a decent person. So if you're an asshole of devs, uh, I'll say it right now. Fuck you. Just, there's no reason. I get that yeah, you're frustrated a- that they launched the game in the state that it was, but there's no reason there's to a- take it out on the people. Mm. Yeah, there's a fine line between criticizing a game and criticizing the person behind the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's just sad how much it continually comes up as as people are verbally attacked for just because their name is on a product. Um, well, even like people like will hunt down the developer and just hound them on personal Twitters, like asking them questions. Why haven't you fixed this? Why haven't you fixed that? Like just yeah. go through the normal support channels all that doing that does is either a piss off the dev or b get you blocked like you're not going to get anywhere with that kind of behavior um yeah. it's also, just I mean, unreal it's a game if you think about like you know for any any person out there with a job and you think about all of like the minutia of the behind the scenes stuff that can get in the way of progress or can slow things down like it's not just a matter of wow why hasn't this dev written you know updated this single bit of code and then hit published and then now the game's working again it's like well you know there's probably daily scrum meetings to figure out the list of priority um well because you have to consider more than one part too i mean in a lot of cases um i mean i have a degree in game programming and it was not easy there's a reason i pivoted i just and i've I've played a lot of video games yeah that's that's (laughs) my uh yeah but I mean, like, I've looked at a video game one on thing. Twitch. So you're focused on one thing, right? You, you say, okay, this is a problem. We need to fix this. That piece of code is tied into so many other things. But if you don't do it right and you don't put the le- the right level of QA in, you fix thing one thing, but you create another. Like, look at, at New World. They, And again, this isn't against the devs. They were having to move so fast to try and keep up with what the community wanted and what the community needed that they didn't have the time to QA. And so you would see them fix a problem, but create another one, fix a problem, but create another one because they were so being so, 
slammed by the community like you need to fix this you need to fix this that they just couldn't put the time into it that they needed um and, and right now things are not easy for devs i mean covid has definitely changed how workflows work um a lot of studios are still kind of getting used to remote work and and how to improve the efficiency there because it's not the same as walking over to your coworker in the office um and, you've, you've and i'm got sure to, as well yeah. as we see covid you know wax and wane and and become more of an issue and then not an issue and these companies are also having to react to that so you know you might also be factoring in like well during a single week it might be that so much time has been spent of like you know shifting resources to work remotely but then back into office but then maybe half of the office is out because they've caught covid um or also just the basic stuff like developers need holidays too if you're if you're sitting at your computer complaining about well i've got this whole week off for holidays why can't i be playing this game that i want to play that they've broken it's like well just because someone else is sitting behind their computer saying man i'm enjoying this week off <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i mean like i so I took a gander at the Battlefield 2042 subreddit. I'm sorry. After this story. I know. Thank you. Because um, it, it was the the mods for it threatened to shut it down or like lock it because of toxicity, right? That's how angry some people are being. And what I find so very ironic is the, the folks on, the, on that subreddit are now kind of playing the victim card by saying the developers are playing the victim card. It's this weird thing That's where, you know, the mental gymnastics right there. Yeah. You know, they're, they're saying things like someone reposted this YouTube comment that says thing is, I have not seen any of these supposed death threats or harassment. This sounds like the developers are using those as buzzwords to disregard the mountains of valid criticism being thrown their way. And it's like, I mean, even if you're not seeing the death threats, they might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or they maybe just want you to shut up so they can work on fixing the game and the community managers well, not having to spend 26 hours a day cleaning up Reddit comments. I think I think this is a, a reap what you sow situation. I'm not going to defend what any of these people have said, but for there's been years and years of um, concerted effort to make this idea of quote-unquote communities for a game where they want feedback, they, they interact with p players that play the game and all this stuff. They, they made it so interlocked that when it gets bad, I'm not, again, I'm not going to defend anything of what these people are doing, but when it, it bites back at them, all of a sudden it's like, ugh, everybody's so awful. It's like, well, I mean, you created this really weird interlocked relationship with people and now you're getting mad when they're mad about something. And let's, and let's be honest, you put out a fucked up product that's broken. And they're eventing that mm -hmm. frustration. They're not doing it correctly. But if anybody has been paying mm -hmm. attention to the past couple of years, people fucking suck. <laughs> yes. yes. And they're going to say you shitty make a good stuff. Point. And you it's make like a good point. It's poking the nest. It's like you poke the nest and then you get mad that you're stung. And it's like, well, they're fucking mad bees who are pieces of shit. Of course they're going to sting you. Why? Don't hit the nest. Like, <laughs> But you make a good point about how the game launched too, right? Like the beta was... Terrible. Uh, that was probably the worst beta I've ever played, and it was a. It almost the entire community was like, the game should not release in this in this form. You guys have to go back and make changes so that people will, you know, get the game that they're expecting or or that they're used to from a quality perspective. And from what I understand, it didn't change much at all from beta to final version. Which, when you've got that that level of feedback i think at one point it was like six hundred thousand concurrence on steam when you get that level of feedback saying hey we're not happy with the state of this game maybe slow things down a bit take a step back and say okay what can we do to improve this launch does it make sense to delay it again because i think that gamers are so used to delays at this point that if you can provide a reason well we want to retool this we want to make this better you're generally going to get more understanding than releasing a game that just isn't up to your standards. But on you know? the flip side, we've also gotten very used to games getting released in an extremely broken and unfinished state and just it's moving true. along and being fine with it. So many people have been. They still sell crazy, which yeah. is absurd. And that's exactly what they're taking advantage of because Battlefield's one of those, you know, yearly release games. 
So they're going to have one every year. It doesn't matter what. It's it's one of those uh, expected profit drivers that they got to have. They got to release this and they, get, they expect this amount of money every year from this thing. That's um, a fair point. And I mean, a lot yeah. of it's corporate pushing, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like not a business. the devs at it's the exact, end of the day. It's, it's not the developers are doing. They don't want to do that. It's, it's, well, look, at, I mean, everybody was mad about Cyberpunk. That's exactly what was happening with them. It was all the, mm -hmm. the suits pushing, oh, we need to get this out because of money, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously it wasn't done. It's the same story. It's like every, every single time I see one of those comments, it's like, wow, this is so broken. How did QA not catch this? They it's did. like, no. <laughs> no they Dev did. knew about it. QA caught it. Like everything went through the correct process. Um, there was just likely someone else behind saying, eh, does it really matter? And then people would be like, well, the main character is holding his gun backwards. So probably is it me? <laughs> no, it's a feature. Matter. When Push you shoot, it. you shoot yourself. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to kind of think about the business side, right? Too. Um, it, like Battlefield is too large to al be allowed to fail. Yep. Yeah. It will fail, but it's too large a thing for them to be able to hold back. There's such a fervent community that they know people will buy. And so they set these milestones and uh, delivery dates, you know, at the start of development to say, okay, we're launching it November or whatever I mean, date it came do out. People like, remember Hardline? They released that. Yeah, I that's don't, true. I don't even remember that, man. I, I really forgot that about game. that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see the next couple of years. We've had Cyberpunk. We've had Battlefield 2042. Um, we've had a handful of other games that have just released in not a good space. Well, and then that's also a very interesting thing that we saw with Halo. Yeah. Is that Halo Infinite had enough negative backlash from the Craig trailer to be pushed back a year but then there was still a push to hit the holiday 2021 time frame so that we're now waiting for you know campaign co-op and like the ability to forge. replay campaign missions uh the forge mode um the ability stuff. to punch enemies without going through them <laughs> i'm gonna keep harping um, on that no no no, no that's a feature that's especially a when oh, master gotcha. chief holds the gun towards his face yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um he played himself. No, so it's weird that, like Halo, Halo was also a, you know, this is too big, it's not allowed to fail, but it also managed to get into, you know, whatever push happened, happened to be enough to say, okay, we, like, we do need to get a lot of stuff into a correct state, that they're still left with this, I'm not going to say that it's broken, that infinite is, like, broken or, you incomplete. know, feature light or whatever, yeah, incomplete, maybe, um, but it's, it's not, it's not the full game that probably fans would have wanted to see at launch, but it's definitely not at that, like, um, you know, rough level that we saw it if it had released December 2020. Yeah, I really would want to know what that would have been like, because, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that would have been the Battlefield 2042. That would have been bad. And I, Microsoft is like, yeah. oh, we're gambling our entire console generation on that, if that would have happened. That's what they were thinking. I know that's what they were thinking. Oh, right. yeah. That, that could have hurt Microsoft a lot but... to have released a year ago. Uh, just knowing what is missing in the current version, it's uh, I can't Ooh. even imagine if they had released at that original date what that would have looked like. Because, I mean, like Stretch said, I mean, it's not an unfinished game. There's just pieces that are missing that mm -hmm. fans have typically come to expect from the Halo franchise. And and there's a big know, difference a, between a, un, content that has not been included yet and unplayable or broken stuff. Correct. And buggy and all that kind of stuff. That's a total different I guess thing. that's also, it's like, you know, everything is there in 2042, but the level of shine is not yep. versus... Not everything is there in Halo Infinite, but the stuff that is there is is pretty good. Yeah, except that yeah. what big team battle or whatever right now. But who, we're not, oh yeah, who you can't play big team battle right now. <laughs> well, apparently yeah. you can okay, sometimes, yeah. but not most of the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think our, it, like, our it's... new writer Alex has said that he can sometimes get into games. <laughs> new writer, new writer, yeah, never very been here brand before. new to the site. Definitely was not here before. Well, let's let's see if he listens to the podcast too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll just, I think every week we pepper a name in and see which staff don't No, we got to say podcast. something. What, what will make him sad? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, the 80s were the, the worst. The in Halo Infinite sucks. Wipeout's never coming out again? I don't know. Uh, I think the Needler's kind of a mixed bag. No one wants to play a new F-Zero game? 
I mean, uh, if they did, <laughs> if they did want to, then Nintendo would have made it by now. Wait, F Zero? You mean that Smash level? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that got the Captain Falcon Smash guy. They're making a game for him. Uh, that's pretty rad. <laughs> they really should make a Captain Falcon game. Yeah. We're, we're Falcon all going to get a Star big Fox? old WTF message from him in Slack this week. <laughs> Um, one thing I do want to say about uh, the, the whole Battlefield thing, too, is like, I, I think, yeah, I agree that it's the sum of the onus is on the devs, right? Like when or not even the devs, but the business, right? Like when when a game is released in a poor state, you're going to get the feedback, right? Um, and obviously the people that are on that subreddit are giving that feedback. And I think it's fair for them to be speaking from that place of criticism. But I think there's also like a level of just take a step back and chill for a second like oh, absolutely like is is it really worth getting mad about a shoot of a video game you know of all like i get it you know maybe you're really looking forward to battlefield 2042 but it came out what two weeks after a call of duty and a week before halo like you have so many other things you could have pivoted to let alone like any older shooters or like i don't know a farming sim <laughs> or like there's so many other video games to play even if 2042 was like you're a gaudy right like you're goaty you're this is the game i'm gonna play this year you have so many other options that it's not worth getting this angry frustrated sure right like maybe give some constructive criticism but to be angry about it all like i don't know it just yeah. feels like a waste of emotional energy oh, i get it. a part of it i think is a, a mixed messaging for some people is that i think What's really weird and interesting about a lot of the gaming community is that there's so much, like, I guess activism is the right word, or people want to speak out about wrongdoings of some kind. And it kind of goes all kinds of ways, whether you agree with it or not politically. It goes whatever they think is wrong or whatever. It goes both ways. But there's so much of that that I think this gets mixed into that. Oh, there's something that I have been wronged, therefore I must say something to help correct this wrong, because I think mm. that's starting to become very ingrained in the gaming community. Um, it's almost like this self-righteousness that comes out. Investor's fallacy? Not sunk time cost. Not sunk, sunk time fallacy, maybe sunk cost fallacy. Like you've invested like, so much of your yeah. emotional energy yeah, into yeah, it. Like yeah. I've, I've been watching trailers and I put 60 bucks towards this game, so... My my voice needs to get heard. Or like on how to fix something it. like Battlefield. Oh, I've been playing Battlefield the series forever. You know, mm, it's my true. the thing or whatever. I'm so emotionally invested in this thing that you know. And and if, and like I said, if we've learned anything in the past couple years, I mean, we sh everybody should have known this before, but particularly the last couple years, there's a lot of people that aren't emotionally aware enough to to handle themselves or treat people correctly or be do the right as thing as a kingdom hearts fan sometimes games just miss and that's okay <laughs> that's that's okay with you that no that just that's just part of Nomura's big plan they don't miss mm. we just don't understand it yet yet uh, so it all we're, waiting around. For, we're waiting for kingdom hearts 4 recore to explain everything yeah yeah i need the i need some mobile game cutscene to tell me something <laughs> yeah oh my god uh, it all comes uh, back to Nomura. It always does. He's a part it, of us. I mean, he's he makes every game. He's got a piece. He's, of, a, he's uh, our silent fifth member of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even need to talk. We do it for he's, him. He's smiling and waving to me right now, giving me the thumbs up. Thanks, yeah. Nomura. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's move on and talk about some of the games we've been playing. Uh, Anton, do you want to start off? What have you been playing in this, in this holiday break? Uh, First, how dare you take a holiday break? But oh. what have you been playing? I don't remember taking a holiday break. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> did he get to take one? Uh, yeah, I worked Christmas. I was I worked twelve hours on Christmas. How well, dare you? Um, do we want to start off on a positive note? Sure. It, do you have one positive and one negative? Uh. <laughs> it sounds like you have two negatives. <laughs> Not two negatives. So okay. So. I was looking for, I saw, I think it was earlier this year, or it might have been even last year, or well, 2021 or 2020, I can't remember when. I played through um, Dragon Quest XI, the Definitive Edition, which was mm -hmm. fun as hell. Super long, by the way, but also super fun. Uh, great JRPG. If nobody's played it, I mean, if you haven't played it and you're into those kind of games, like, go play it, because it's a really good time. Uh, so I was looking for something like that-ish, because it was, what I liked about that 
um, is it's pretty chill. It doesn't take a lot of attention paid to it. You know what, if, you know what I mean? Not like I'm playing a shooter where I got to pay attention to fucking everything on the screen all the time. Mm-hmm. Kind of a deal. And, you know, it tells a little fun little story. So I was looking for something like that. So I was looking at old JRPGs to play. And I played a bunch of them. So I was looking at some classic ones, and there's uh, one I'd always heard about is the what's the overall what the Legend of Heroes series or whatever, all the trails of whatever bullshit, trails, trails of, the sky, of the whatever, trails of Cold Steel or whatever. And I was like, all right, so many people I I know several people that are way into these, so I was like, I'll give it a go. Why not? It was on sale for like ten dollars the first one, so I was like, whatever, I'll try it. <sighs> uh oh. So I know a lot of people like it, and it's a cult hit. So I can't, I don't want to say it's bad, because people like it for a reason. But, my God, I just, (laughs) I cannot stand it. The writing in it, I cannot stand for a second. It's, 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 I I don't know, it's, it's like a, it's like I was in high school and I wrote what I thought was a witty line, and then I patted myself on the back for it in that same Mm. dialogue. That's the feeling I got. And I was like, oh, my God. I kind can't. of amateur hour-ish. Well, just everything was just so juvenile. And I was like, okay, I, I can get behind that. But it was also like, uh, way, I don't know. It just felt way more into itself than it should be. Because uh, everybody's saying, oh, that's what's so great about the writing. And there's so much. Like, you'll just stop for a second and you'll have like two minutes of dialogue. If you were just hit there to spam the button through them, it would take you like a minute just to get through all the dialogue options. Like text back and forth they talk so fucking much and it's mm. not good talk like it's not good dialogue to me to, I, it doesn't I, I shouldn't say it's not good i guess it's i does not <laughs> bounced off it really hard <laughs> I was it, like, it doesn't I, speak to you not in the slightest <laughs> uh because i was even like google i was like okay so what am i not getting here so i started looking at like quotes for the game that people liked and i'm like oh they liked that Okay, <laughs> and like, uh, I don't know. Well, st- stuff like one of the characters one time they're like they like strong armor guy. They're like having an argument to try to get information out, and it was like a very basic like, okay, I'll give you this information if you give me this information, kind of a deal. And then the guy left, and the other two party members like, man, you might have a career in racketeering with how good you are at that. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like it was that kind of stuff. And I'm like, huh? No, I don't, it's just, I tried. The, the, the combat was fine. It was inter- I mean, it's a 20-year-old game at this point, close to 20-year-old game. Uh, it does some interesting stuff, turn-based combat stuff. Uh, I was like, okay, I can get into that. I like that, but boy, is that dialogue just unbearable. <laughs> Yikes. Just unbearable. I can't, I, uh, I really want someone to lay out why they like it to me, because I can't fathom it. <laughs> Well, how would you compare it to something like Persona? Um, so per, it's like uh, Persona is you know, more part natural. Of me is like, okay, this is like it's constantly trying to say the witty thing, but not a lot. Like most of the time, like it's trying to do that. Like, and what I say all the time, I mean literally like every fucking time, it's trying to say something like that, and it's like. This isn't witty. There's nothing do you think there. It's, do you think it's like trying to stretch the word limit kind of thing? Ah, uh, like you know, they're they're trying to they're trying to say three sentences where one sentence could suffice, so that they need to like flow in with more. No, uh, like the publisher said, this script needs to be three hundred thousand words before you can uh, publish it. Oh, then they probably could oh, have got rid of a third of their dialogue if that's what they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Just the. the they're, they're doing it like pay per word. Yeah, I don't know. It's just... <laughs> like you get 50 cents per word written now. Just start and it's like, well, time to flower this up. What's <laughs> you know, get, high school style? I get the people like it, but not for me. Mm, Anywho. Fair. So yeah, I guess if you're talking about Persona, Persona just much more natural. Felt more realistic of stuff where this was just... It was felt very forced and did not accomplish what... Well, apparently it did with some people accomplish what it wanted to do, but not for me. Was not enjoying it <laughs> at all. Fair. Like I, <laughs> I, I was I, I gave it a good trial. It's like, all right, these kind of, they're like children, let like they're young people when you know maybe st- like shit happens to them. Like okay, they'll stop being so. No, doesn't stop. And then I googled it. I was like, okay, does it ever change? Like, do I get? Does this get better for me? 
<laughs> can I escape this? <laughs> no, it's like that the whole time. So that's when I was like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I will not put myself through this. Uh, it's such a so long saying. Is that, yeah. What you're saying is that you won't be talking about how much you've been playing this no, game next I, week. I will <laughs> never talk about it again. <laughs> except to say, except in desperation to try to understand what people like about it. <laughs> that means that we're gonna get the we're gonna get the angry messages from Courtney about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. It's okay. We're just, just gonna. Wrap <laughs> I guess up. I see. When I was thinking Tess, about talking about this. this, I didn't intend to be this hard on it. But God, I hate it so much. <laughs> it's like the more you talk, the more you realize. I'm more, like I sent something to my friend on Discord. I was like, I can't. I was like, why? <laughs> oh, I hated it. I don't know. I've not, I've not had this much like what this is so awful reaction in a long time. Um, mm. Anyway, so then I went and looked for another one. I Man, it's really hard to get JRPGs like find them. Uh, like so many of them never made to PC <laughs> and stuff. You know what I mean? Like the older older ones. Um, other than like obviously the big Square Enix ones, those are all on PC more or less. But uh, so I tried. Uh, so I went. I went with Tales of Arise to give that a try. Ooh. And I am playing that now. And uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it to <laughs> click. Okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm not hating it. I just killed a uh, Balsack. I mean Balsef. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. <laughs> the, first, the first big boss. Yeah. Whenever they say it, I'm always like, "Are they saying Balsack? No, Balsef. <laughs> so I mean, they say a bunch of weird stuff. And like, why are monsters called Zoogles? Like we didn't need that. It just makes it. It makes me cannot take this seriously now. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go look at all these zoogles. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> it's like how Back for Blood, like they're written. Exactly. Zombies, Why do we know? need like... that? I don't need that. I don't need to, yeah. all of these zoogles when it's a fucking wolf. Oh, it's a wolf. It's just called a fucking wolf. Why you gotta got a zoogle? No, that's a type of zoogle. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, why are we He's doing so this? Mad. I just, uh, uh, this is what I both love and hate about Japanese games. They do this mostly. Like, Japanese devs like to do this stuff. Like, we need to give this its own name and thing and then describe, give it a definition. And it's like, that's just like, that's a tree, man. Just call it a fucking tree. <laughs> like, they do that kind of stuff. But it's also yeah. why I love them because it's so weird. <laughs> this is. <laughs> we'll, we'll learn in like two years that it's really just that on booting up the game. Alton accidentally said it to the wrong language. <laughs> <laughs> playing it in German. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> no. How are you? How are you finding the dialogue in? Because I think Tales of is also very dialogue heavy. It's pretty dialogue heavy series. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing outstanding about it so far to me. Mm. Seems fine. I mean, seems fine. Everything seems very tropey so far for Japanese J JRPG stuff or anime stuff so far. I'm like, oh, okay. Like in the first minute, I got the super powerful anime waifu with me now. Like <laughs> that, all of yeah. them seem to have. Uh, yeah. You've got the anime waifu. You've heard the prophecy that you're going to save the world, and you're on your way to to go and retrieve uh, somewhere between three to seven crystals. Ha! You have not played this game, have you? <laughs> I have not. No. Hey, <laughs> hey, but, but you, you're not but too you far it. off. But <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> It's 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 five MacGuffins. That's right. Oh, my bad. I probably I probably could have saved myself and not gone as hard in with the idea yeah. of crystals. But um, yeah, that's fine. I'll take that. Yeah. No, but I'm enjoying. I mean, that's it's like it's the, fun. The, the combat free space fun. on the JRPG bingo board. Mm -hmm. Combat's fun. It's not what I was looking for. I wanted a bit. I don't know something ch more chill with turn based stuff. But I was like, whatever. I'll give it a go. It's pretty neat. Uh, I'm not. I have to get to the the. I don't like how the controller's laid. I think I have to. I'm gonna have to mess with the key bindings. It's just not clicking with me. I'm getting more frustrated. If you want to play it, a, it's pretty good. Interesting slash weird JRPG with a really awesome combat system. You should check out the Lost Remnant. I know um, of the it's Last a, Remnant. It's a Square Enix one. It's pretty much a Final Fantasy game, but the combat is super cool, super unique. The, that you like build up squads. Is this the Wii one. Um, no, uh, I'm thinking of something on Wii. It's, it was on the uh, 360 and PC originally. Okay. Yeah, I think you can still get it via Steam. Um, Someday. But that was a cool one. Oh, and it's also on Switch. They ported it to Switch like last oh, year. There you go. 
Yeah, I, I think Tales of uh, Tales of Arise specifically, right? I think that first arc you just finished, yeah. it's very like it's super on the nose. With oh, it's uh, it like slavery. It's very like slavery is bad and all that, right? Yeah. Like it's just uh, you know it, it's not delicate about any of that. Um, uh, so but I think as so I'll just say, yeah. you've said stuff and I've read stuff, but people like I'm hoping to see more because I'm just now getting out of there. Like I just killed that dude. And I'm moving into the snowy world place. Almost said world, but region. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think as you get all six party, like, because the the best part of the game is the party members. I think those characters are brought to life really well. Yep. And then it's through them that you explore more of the themes in the game that get a little like it's it's not you know uh fit, like it's not classic literature or anything right yep. like it's not gonna blow your mind but it gets better. I'll say that. Well, I, I, not I, nothing has been like bad so far, but it's just been very expected. Like, okay, I've I've no, been I'm, through the I'm motions. Not, of I distinctly this remember you saying that you hated it. Uh, trails. It. I said exactly. trails, not tales. And if trails and if of arise. anyone, <laughs> and if anyone wants to um, send him death threats, then uh, you know what's your Twitter handle again? You know what? Yeah, Go let's ahead. I need that. some spice <laughs> in my life. I don't care. <laughs> uh, hey, Rut, what have you been playing? Uh, so, like pretty much everyone else, I am super into The Witcher right now. Um, uh, finished season two, I'm on book five or six. Um, and so I've, I had 12 days off at the end of the year, played a boatload of Witcher. I think I played like 65 hours or something. Um, Aaron, what is still that? not is through it, Velen, though. Is that like an um, indie game or something? What is that? Very small. Um, you okay. probably have not heard of CD Projekt Red. Not they haven't released Velen. anything notable in the last two years so i mean that's actually correct yeah <laughs> i mean it's notable but not in like the good way you know, yeah. cyberpunk was 2020 <laughs> december 2020 so it's that's within two years thank I, you I, he wasn't doing the son year of thing. a bitch <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm having a great time to answer stretch's question in slack no i have not turned on the henry cavill mod um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, for people that, that enjoy just kind of a good role to explore and um, do side quest after side quest after side quest after side quest. Uh, That's where the is, game is. It scratches that. That's the it, best it part It really of the game. is, though. Like, some of the best the main parts story of the game is, are is pretty quests. standard fair fantasy bullshit. It's the side yeah. quests where the game lives. Mm -hmm. yep, you, um, get your, you get your prophecy, and then you meet your waifu, and then you have yeah, to go find and the find six the crystals. three to seven crystals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is the a side quest. Yeah. And then there's just challenging literally everyone to Gwent. Mm -hmm. Side quest? Yeah. Nah. Gwent? Yeah. Yeah. see a round of Gwent. I think it's really cool that they put, you know, that, that entire game Gwent? It's cool that they put that, that in they the put Witcher. That in there. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. It's just really nice of them to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy. So yeah, they already made a that. game after the show. Yeah. 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 That was quick. Unreal. Um, and then I've been playing since there's no embargo right now. Um, Anacrusis, which is a new um, one of those co-op shooters. Left for Dead like. Left for Dead like. It's it's basically if Left for Dead and Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Trek, the original series had a baby. Like it's just sweet retro seventies uh, uh, like. You no, know, I think vibes. Kirk would have tried to make a baby with someone from Left for Dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have nothing to say to that. Um, <laughs> that is okay. Um, that, don't don't act like he wasn't well known for that. That's when what? when you you find the secret item in Left for Dead that's a, a magical flute that then gives him flashbacks to his previous life on yeah. Earth and I'm everything. Just saying, that's that mod, I'm right? Saying that Kirk's, uh, you know, he's well known to he just he bangs everybody. Everything that moves. Yes, but you're talking about making babies. It left for debt. There's a lot. Wrong anyway, with that Warcraft statement. three thumbnails. Um, <laughs> Bro, that was Anacrusis. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, Anacrusis, right? But yeah, Anacrusis. It's good. Um, it's it's scratching the itch that Back for Blood failed to do for me. These specials are actually like you remember them. They actually have quick. Their, what's one of their names? Unique, uh, the Flasher. There you go. All right, I didn't believe you. Um, <laughs> which really? is literally just one that... Does he wear a trench he, coat? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he basically just has this huge field of light, and it blinds you until you take him down. Which, if you've got a brute, also, like, 
charging you and you can't see jack shit like it's actually a really good um kind of rememberable combo and the ai director is really really good um it's very good so like you'll start a uh an episode and you're just like smashing everything in your path and then the ai director is like "Mm, not anymore um and it dynamically scales we're like left for dead I, I believe you could change the difficulty that you were going up against there is no difficulty in intercrucis maybe they'll add one but i feel like the ai director does a really good job of scaling based on either the number of players or like how you're progressing along each episode that i never felt unchallenged except for like early on when you're you're kind of uh starting up and the ai director is getting used to how you're playing um that's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really really good, um, and it, it's coming out on Games Pass um, on the thirteenth, um, which is a Thursday, weird day to release a game. But um, so if you're looking to scratch that Left 4 Dead itch and, and try something new, there's three episodes right now, which is about uh, maybe like four and a half hours of content if you just play through it all. Um, but again, with the AI director, every single playthrough is a little different um the perk there's these little like matter matter compilers that you run up to you interact with them and then they give you a perk so Mm. it's similar to back for blood except for you you don't have like a a deck it's just you walk up to it it's got three random perks and and you can kind of build your play style the way you want the grenades are interesting like there's a stasis grenade that'll slow things down and there's a vortex grenade that sucks them in and blows them up um and some other stuff it's i'm i'm really digging it it's it's one that i kind of keep going back to even solo just to kind of explore are any of the upgrades or perks like perpetual across um play sessions it's across an entire episode so an episode is usually comprised of three to five levels for the most part depending on which one it is and each level has two to three matter compilers that you can find Okay, yeah, because I mean, I know that we've had what World War Z now and Back for Blood both kind of had that idea of like building up a character, but this sounds a lot closer to traditional Left for Dead, but with I guess a, a roguelite element, I would say would be like the random perks. Yeah, yeah, that I mean, that's that's pretty spot on. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's fun, especially with friends. Um, I've talked to a couple other people, and I'm glad that the consensus is that Lance, as an AI, is just a dumbass. Um, <laughs> you will just like you'll be like, "Where the fuck is Lance?" And he's just like over jumping up and down on a fucking chair. You're <laughs> like, "What the shit?" Um, and it's always Lance every single time. Um, so I don't know if the developers intended that, but it's it's hilarious to me that every time you're wondering where an AI is or what they're doing, it's fucking Lance. So that means now whenever you boot up the game, listeners, and you're going to play as Lance, just got to jump up and down in a corner and trick everyone into thinking you're an AI. Well, that is one weird thing. So the way you can't actually choose which character you play right now. So oh. you it's based on the order in which you join the party. Um, so it's a set hmm. order. Um, and Lance is the last one. So again, I think they were intending it. They're like, if three people are playing, yeah, they get that dumbass AI named Lance. Mm. Um, and I hope He's the Ellis amazing. of... Yes, yeah um and his voice lines are ridiculous too so it's just it fits nice um, yeah poor lance poor lance <laughs> uh stretch what have you been playing i'm i've been you know in in my tabletop gaming life i've been gearing up for a next huge section in the dungeons and dragons campaign i run so all of my free time has gone into planning that and figuring out story beats and stuff. So really the most gaming I've done this week is my daily play of Wordle, um, which I have been slowly drawing everyone from Tech Raptor into. I think first day, first two or three days of playing, I was the only one that posted in Slack. And now we're to the point where we have at least eight people posting their Wordle scores and telling about, you know, well, my dad got this or my wife got this and um that's just been a fun a fun thing to be playing i absolutely love that it is a mobile game or like something that i can can do on like in terms of gaming that does not require my constant attention it is just like pop in in the morning get it done in like you know 
10 minutes and pop out and then like that's it it's actually it's a game that has left me craving for more i kind of wish that there was like three or you know five ones that you could do in a day um but that's really what i've been doing gaming can, yeah, so um can, listener if you thought you could escape wordle off of twitter facebook or any other medium that you're currently on tough shit <laughs> can, can i ask a question i've been afraid to ask what what is wordle so it is a game that every day you go to the website you can just google wordle and it'll be the first link and there is a random word of the day it's a five letter word and you have six attempts to guess it um you with each guess it will tell you if that letter does not is not in the word at all if that letter is in the word but in the wrong place or if that letter is in the correct place oh okay so it's like you know i always start with the word ouija o-u-i-j-a because it knocks out the majority of the vowels um and that can really immediately like help whittle down what what board you have remaining and like the on-screen keyboard tracks as well to like let you know which words like which letters you can't you know you shouldn't be including mm. Um, and so like, there's no prompt, there's no guess, like there's no question, there's no like hint or anything. Um, I'll just like put in Ouija first and see what vowels I have, if they're in the right or the wrong place. And then you just make those six guesses. And uh, if you get them, awesome. If you don't get them, you know, whatever. And the the sharing of it is so smart that every time you see those stacks of blocks that people share on Twitter or you've seen the ones in Slack, if it's gray, that's a letter that hasn't come through. The The yellow is the right letter, wrong place. So it's like you can show people your process, um, but it doesn't spoil anything. Mm. So it, it's it's a puzzle game. It's like a, a daily daily puzzle you can play that you can then like of share fortune. and show off. Yeah, because I, I, I do recognize... Or like Mastermind, kind of. Yeah, because I recognize that like it's a very social thing right now, right? Like it that's i feel like that's the biggest part of it is like being able to show off to your friends like yeah here's what i did or even like talking through different people's processes and stuff mm -hmm. um like i know my wife always uses the word early first because that will like knock out a bunch and it also you know if it doesn't have that why at the end then there's so many words that have a why at the end that it's just like well we don't need to worry about any of those and it's kind of how do you whittle down your alphabet? <laughs> right. Uh, and then like the, I've only completely missed a word once before and it was a word I'd never heard of and I've immediately forgotten. So I guess this invalidates the next thing I'm going to say, but it's like, that was an opportunity for me to look up a word. But the fact that it hasn't, <laughs> hasn't it's, stuck with was me. It the it one that you did it was uh, banal? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> banal. Um, banal? Did I mispronounce it? <laughs> Sure it's well, banal, it's so okay. lacking in originality as to be obvious and boring. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's fun. It's five minutes out of my day, and there's you know there's no way that I can hit, you know, feed me another pellet or anything. Um, <laughs> and so I just move on with my day. I hate it's all fun. of you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rut's so tired of looking at these banal memes. <laughs> Kids these days with their banal memes. Uh, you know, Stretch, I commend you for trying to just soldier through <laughs> all the rest of us uh, time. Wordle, Wordle is great. It's a, I just didn't want to touch Rut's banal, so I figured I'd move on. It's like, I think that the greatest part about it I is I can't get away from it because my wife makes fun of me for how I pronounce everything, too. Because I just make an assumption. Whether I know it or not, I just fucking go for it. Hey, Rut, have you oh. tried getting good? <laughs> Uh, at it's a banal joke. <laughs> this is this is also why we don't let Rut edit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's just reading. He doesn't have to pronounce the words. Either. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. It's hard to fuck well, up what pronunciation have you been on a uh, yeah. on guide. Yeah, a guide. I think it's a guide. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's an I've... Italian guy, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I've been playing Wildermyth. Um, I know a lot of people were talking about it last year. Like as people have been wrapping up their game of the year stuff, I've heard Wildermyth come up from a few people. So I was like, okay, let's check this out. Um, have any of y'all played this or heard of it? 
I know of it, nope. but I have not played it. Okay, so it's um, it's like a tactical RPG at its core, right? You know, there's the grid. You can attack people, use spells, all that sort of stuff. It's like if you played Final Fantasy Tactics, you have a good idea of what this game probably plays like. But the real hook of it is there's no, like, that's the main character. There's no, like, Cloud. You know, there's no tifa or anything like that it's you kind of randomly generate characters and you can get into the nitty-gritty and like i'm going to name them this and they're going to be like this and this is their background but they're randomly generated the personalities are randomly generated and then you choose a campaign and there are like five of them but then all of the events between the large events are randomly generated too but they're all played off of how your character's personalities would react to these things and then you make choices etc cetera, etc cetera. so essentially every campaign you play is going to feel a little bit different and you have to make these choices that can change kind of everything like by the end of one campaign i had a character who early on touched like a fire beam a fire like shrine and then by the mm -hmm. end of the campaign like two of her arms were fire like, she couldn't use weapons, but she could shoot fireballs and punch people with fire fists. Ooh. Just because that's what it is. It feels like a D&D &D campaign that you didn't create, that the AI created for you. And it has that same energy of, like, I had these characters, you know, I started when they were, like, 18 years old and just learning how to fight. And now, like, you know, that guy, 68, he's retiring and, like, his son's taking up the mantle as time is going on and stuff like that. And it's just really fascinating to see how this game is pulling it off. Like it's like trying to figure out a magic trick in a way, like how they're they're making all these you know narrative Legos, I guess, work. That sounds super cool. So yeah. is it like a one run is going through a campaign with these heroes, or do they like die off and you get a new one in this world, or you start over? Um, I haven't had anyone like die die yet. But when well, so when or someone like, like or get, yeah, well, some retire and they might have a kid like either there's like inter-party romance or like they just you know because every like so every campaign Kirk is it? like yeah sometimes they captain kirk it right um because the campaign is like three to five chapters but between each chapter 10 to 12 years pass so that's how your characters get older and have kids and so on um so that's why when they retire when they reach retirement age like they, they do this thing where, okay, let's say that guy retires, but he was really close with this party member. And because of that, that party member gets like a share of the experience points from the retire, the person retiring mm -hmm. and you get to choose. Mm -hmm. So is it like, was it, you know, that he raised his daughter really well, or was it that he was just besties with this person? Or was it that, you know, they sh shared this hardship and struggle that forged a bond that couldn't be broke? Like it's all that sort of stuff, right? That's just so you know it feels really oddly rich in storytelling without actually being scripted in a weird way because it's all random it sounds like one of those like legacy tabletop games um yeah you know, you'll go through and like you'll play a session with people and it could be like a very rpg kind of dri or ttrpg driven system but then you know the the character that you play in round one will be the great 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 grandfather in round you know of the character from round seven but then a choice that you made in round three will affect the layout of the dungeon that you're currently exploring that sounds awesome yeah, it's um a lot i'm like gonna that. i'm gonna have to check that out yeah and, and the art is really cute it, it's very like pop-up book style so like when you're going through the the, the tactical stuff like it's not a tree it's like a paper cut out of a tree that's standing up stuff like that <laughs> paper mario meets D, D. pretty much yeah <laughs> i don't know it's it and there is a little bit of that legacy thing you're talking about too because like I, I finished a few campaigns so you can like in the next one you can hire older party members hmm. like if you have enough resource and they do the thing where it's like oh hey you're that legendary folk hero or whatever like that sort of thing so that's cool yeah so if you're really into like that that free-flowing tabletop rpg idea right of like the story can go anywhere it can be anything characters can die at any moment but characters can also mutate or you know turn on each other at any moment that sort of thing <laughs> i would check out wildermyth it's really cool and it's only 25 bucks on steam mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Is it on any other platform? I believe the developers want to get it on Switch uh, within a year, but okay, you know, no, no yeah, aside from that. dates. Uh, this is going to be one hell of a Switch game. Yeah, I like that or Steam yeah. Deck. If you're getting a Steam Deck, it'd probably be really good for that too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. And I think that wraps up our uh, our first record. Like we recorded this episode in 2022, so this is kind of our first 2022 episode. Um, we, we hope you enjoyed. It. We did it. We hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, feel free to rate, review us, or subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you know, hit hit subscribe there, hit the like button, and you know, let us know down below how's your 2022 starting. What's the first game you played in 2022? Let us know. No, make it better than Trails of the Sky, please. <laughs> Hopefully it's better. <laughs> I finished Guardians of the Galaxy as my first 2022 game. Nice. That was a That's good a way good to start, start the year. That is a good start. Probably better than Trails. Yeah. Um, probably if about. you want... If you need any more reviews, features, news, etc., you can check out techraptor.net where we're always posting content there. Or if you just want to keep it here on the podcast feed, we will be back next Monday. See ya. <laughs>